warriors that are united by a cause and are deeply motivated to ensure their families can live on in a world ridden with conflict and evil are the most driven fighters. These fighters do not fight for glory, fame or riches, they were born into their role in life as a means for their clan to survive. They never really had a choice but to become a fighter and only the dead have seen the end of war, so when everything is on the line, you have no choice but to become a very skilled fighter. The warrior has gotten a simple but effective nickname, namely the warrior. The warrior is the most skilled member of his clan and according to the rumors, this individual has never lost a single battle in his life. The score? 221 to 0. Outside of his own tribe, this individual is also deeply connected with mysterious forces directly tied to the earth that have granted the skilled warrior access to very powerful and rare weapons sharpened by very specific ancient trees that only these forces have access to. Combine these powerful and lethal weapons with the dexterity, raw talent and skill of the fighter and you have a deadly mix. The warrior is the only starting class I have not covered yet in my get OP early guides. Well, I guess, but today is time for this class to shine and no, there is no particular reason that this class is the last one on the list, it's just how the stars align. I actually really like this class in terms of aesthetics and lore. It has one of the coolest grips out of all starting classes, so that is a nice mental boost that you get when you choose the warrior. The warrior starts with very high levels in dexterity, making it the class with the highest starting levels in dexterity. Choose the warrior, pick the golden seed for the best starting keepsake and let's start wrecking things. In game you'll see that you'll start off with two scimitars and a shield giving you an impression of the direction that we're going with this build. High dexterity, razor sharp, hard cutting, agile weapons and really destruction everywhere. We will build our warrior as a pure dexterity skilled fighter that just completely slices through everything like it's butter, destroying enemies instantly. Thankfully the most brutal and hardest hitting weapon when doing a pure dexterity build can be gotten right at the start of the game. And not only one of them, no, you can get two of these rare weapons, or even more if you're feeling funky. But this step will be a bit easier if you give yourself a head start, so you don't die as quickly. So let's get OP early first. If the next step for you is familiar, then you can skip to the timestamp shown on screen. If not, buckle up and let's get going. First of all, go to the gate front side of Grace, get your mount from Melina. After getting the mount, we can now finally move around with some pace. Then go to the second caravan down the road from where you just spoke Melina. In this caravan, there will be a chest at the back side. Loot it and you will get the flail. Then go back to the starting area, right where you just met your BFF and mount and ride to the beach in the southern part of this place. It is really close to the starting area. On the beach, you will find a golden pickled fowl food, which you will want to use in a second. And it's now time to go to Galit. Go to the third church of America, pick up the goodies that are laying around here for you to pick up and then go beyond the church and take the teleport. This will teleport you to exactly here on the map and you want to go south till you reach Fort Ferret. That's this spot on the map. Ignore all the enemies on the route to the fort no matter how big they are. And when you arrive at Fort Ferret you want to pick up a very nice talisman. You want to ignore all the bats while you're running inside and move towards the ladder. Just run, climb up and then pick up the Dactus medallion. This is very important so don't forget to do that. Then keep moving till you get to the second gap and jump down. Move to the right of yours pick up the golden rune that's laying around there and then jump to the sneaky pathway to your right. Keep moving till you can jump down again and there will be the Radican Sword Shield. If you're not familiar with this talisman, it's a very good talisman that will help us out because it provides a lot of relevant stats right at the start of the game. After putting on the talisman, go outside and kill Grail with your flail. Spin the thing like there is no tomorrow. To make it as easy and fast as possible to kill this dragon. The flail has built in bleed so you can just spin around and wait for those bleed procs to make quick work of the dragon. Make sure to pop the golden pickled fowl food before the dragon dies and also pop the golden rune that you picked up inside the fort. After all of that you'll be rich as f in runes and can get to level 36 at the very least. With your new collection of runes you want to level up something like this. 
In combination with the Radican Sword Shield, this will make sure we meet the requirements to wield the weapons that we're going to use. And it also gives you a good amount of sustain and tankiness with our investment in endurance and vigor. And since our weapons scale insanely hard with dexterity, we also put a few extra points in dexterity to make us even hit harder. The Guardians of the Earth Tree possess a powerful weapon, the Guardian Sword Spear. This is a special weapon type. It is the only weapon of the Sword Spear type in the game. And no, that is not an actual type. It is actually classified as a Halberd. But nonetheless, it has something unique for sure. Even if you just look at how this thing looks. What's even more unique about this weapon is that it scales insanely hard with dexterity. It is the hardest scaling dexterity weapon in the entire game. With the potential to reach ridiculous numbers of AR. And like I said, you can get it right away. It beats every other weapon in the game that scales really well with dexterity as well. And as you see, the difference can be up to several hundreds of AR. This weapon is really nuts. And when we get to the combat in a bit, you'll see exactly what I mean. The best farm I have found for this particular weapon is in Take Your Guesses 3, 2, 1, the best region in the game, Galid, right near the minor air tree in the western part. There are like 8 guardians here in close proximity, and they are not high level, unlike some of the guardians found in other regions or other places, making them the perfect farm to get 2 guardian sword spears when you're just starting out a new playthrough. The warrior's double scimitar makes it a very easy farm as well, you can just jump attack to quickly deal with them without you running a lot of risk of dying. You want to keep doing this over and over, reload the area, until you have two guardian sword spears. Two is more than one, everyone knows that, so that makes it better, right? But on a serious note, you will see why running two is really nice in a bit. Reload the area at the church for the best reload point. If you don't want to deal with the invader, either make her jump off the nearby cliff so you get rid of her the old fashioned way or just normally defeat her or just run away towards the guardians because you don't have to fight her at all actually. Whatever works best for you. If RNG is not on your side, you can pick up a silver pickled foul food to increase your luck, but otherwise it is not too bad if the farm takes a bit longer since it gives you a lot of foods as well, which is nice for a later part in this video when we want to upgrade our sword spears. When you get two of these babies, it is time to completely destroy the game. I really wasn't exaggerating before when I was saying that these things are so insanely lethal, it is not even funny. But wait, didn't the warrior and his tribe and the guardians form an alliance, so why are you killing them? Well, the guardians of the earth tree are a bit of a weird species. Nobody truly understands them. What's up? What's up? But what we do know is that they are very proficient in combat and take massive pride in their weapons. They're not going to give their rare weapons for free to you. What are you, charity? No, you need to prove yourself and kill them over and over till they deem you worthy to get their weapons. They don't care that they die, they magically get back to life when you decide to rest at a nearby church anyways, it is all good. I really wasn't exaggerating before when I was saying that these things are so insanely lethal, it is not even funny. With both the power stance moveset, the normal moveset of the sword spear in your main hand, as well as the jump attacks you get when wielding two of these, you are completely covered in every access of combat. Nothing will slip by your side basically. Now I do recommend you to use R1 or just the normal attacks with your main hand sword spear for when you just want to quickly kill things that are in your way, as it has the quick moveset of just running one guardian sword spear. And then use the power stance moveset when you feel like there's more leeway, because Hitting your enemies with two of these will obviously hit harder, but they will also take a bit longer to swing. The sword spears have a really nice range to them, making jump attacks in particular really effective. And that is the main reason we're running two of them. Jump attacks with these things are insanely powerful, and they hit like an absolute truck with the setup that I will show you in a second. Jump attacks also give you a really reliable way to kill enemies that are way higher level than you, even if you just started out a new playthrough. So you definitely want to utilize them whenever you see fit. What is also nice is that all of these different types of ways of attacking your enemies will in fact stagger them with these weapons. So you always feel like you will completely control any situation in combat. So let's also go over the Ashes of Wars that you want to run with this pure dexterity build. And these Ashes of Wars will make these weapons absolute beasts. The first one that is amazing on a Guardian Sword Spear is going to be Sword Dance in fact. And this Ash 4 can be gotten in Southwest Lernia, quite close to Limbrave actually, as a drop from a Teardrop Scarab, right next to the Minor Earth Tree. You'll want to put this one on your main Ash 4. 
Now a sword dance consists out of 3 hits basically. Make sure to cast the Ash of War again or any input really after the first 2 slashes finish to end with a third downward slash that deals really crazy damage. Applying the Ash of War on your weapon also makes it a keen weapon, which is exactly what we want, as it will make our weapon scale even harder with dexterity, resulting in insane damage. Now using Sword of Dance with Guardian Sword Spear and my setup will just trivialize a lot of bosses, literally. Many bosses will be gone within seconds. The good thing about this Ash of War is that it also gives you really decent hyper armor when you cast it, which means you won't get interrupted every time you cast it, and you usually will be able to get that 3 part combo in and get all of that juicy damage on your enemies. For our offhand guardian sword spear, we want to use something that can deal with things in the distance, since as you just saw, we are definitely covered in every aspect in melee range. That way we will cover every aspect of combat and there are two great options for this. Now if you just care about doing damage then Ice Spear is going to be the best choice for your offhand sword spear. No contest, Ice Spear is not just an incredible Ash of War for this build specifically, it is one of the best Ashes of Wars in the game in general and you can pick it up right at the start of the game. It will deal great damage with barely any investment in stats, procs frostbite burst on your enemies and applies the frostbite debuff which results in a boost to your damage damage output on your target. Ice Spear however is already a part of my Bandit Get OP early video however and I really want every class to have a different moveset and feel, at least in my universe. The one thing that holds Ice Spear from not just being absolutely broken beyond repair is its range. What if we give ourselves the ability to strike enemies anywhere, anytime? There's another Ash of War that has unlimited range. Yes, you heard it right, you can hit things that are literally across the map with this Ash of War. This is Spectral Lance, and this is going to be the Ash of War that I'm going to put on my offhand sword spirit. So for you, you can decide whatever Ash of War you want. Either option is going to be really good. But Spectral Lance is not amazing due to its damage. No, it is rather amazing because of its range and poise damage. It literally stands breaks everything you're fighting really fast and you can do this again from any distance. You can outrange enemies with this Ash of War that should technically outrange you. With Spectral Lance you get the opportunity to strike anything, anywhere, everywhere. This feeling of just having a tool to always strike whatever is really nice and with all the control you get with Spectral Lands in combat it is a really good Ash of War in my opinion and you can get it right at the start of the game. The Ash of War also got a buff recently making it now the best time to try out this Ash of War. To get it you want to grab the key that unlocks Ryer Lakaria Academy right here. Go inside the academy, move past everything or just kill everything if you want, but make sure you get to the Church of the Cuckoo Grace and go outside in the graveyard. When you're in the graveyard, you want to move all the way up till you can go down again essentially and you'll find a teardrop scarab there that drops the Ash of War for you. It comes with Occult on default, but after you defeat Margit, you can obtain the Iron Red Blade, which gives you the opportunity to make your other Sword Spear keen as well, which is what you definitely want to have ultimately. You can kill Margit in like 10 seconds, and you definitely want to have both of your weapons on the keen affinity, since it will make your raw damage as high as possible. Speaking about killing Margit, after killing Margit, you can pick up your second Talisman. The Claw Talisman in Stormville, not too far away from where you just killed Margit, is a really nice second Talisman to make you even more OP early on. This Talisman will make your jump attacks hit even harder. But before killing Margit and picking up the loot in Stormville, I would recommend you to do a few more things to have the ultimate start. Now we have two Sword Spears with the Ashes of Wars that we want, but it's time to upgrade them. To get both of them to plus 6, make sure to go to the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, go to the bottom of this cave to fight the Crystallion right there. If you're doing this, then you will see that the first few hits won't do much at all. Don't panic, after you break this Crystallion's armor, you will start absolutely destroying him. And from that point onwards, this fight becomes an absolute joke. You will destroy this guy completely, especially if you use jump attacks, because they will deal great damage and stagger this boss over and over. Killing this boss gives you the bell bearing that you need to get both of your weapons to plus 6. 
And from the farm earlier shown in this video, when we were fishing for those sword spears, you should have some runes by now, so you can actually start right away upgrading your sword spears. To get your weapons to even higher levels, make sure to go to Fort Haid and get the other side of the Delectus Medallion right there, so you can go to the Altus Plateau region. After you get into Lernia, you want to move towards the bridge, something like this. When you arrive at the bridge, you can open it with your Dectus Medallion, and in the Altus Plateau region, you want to go to the Seal Tunnel and pick up the Smithing Stone Miner Spell being number two. In the seal tunnel, hit the hidden wall, go to the chest and pick up the second bell bearing to give you the possibility to buy a smithing stone three and four. Then you want to start farming the miners here. When you have farmed enough smithing stone number fives, move through the cave some more while hitting more of the hidden walls here. And eventually you will want to drop down to the room with the big abductor thing. Go to the, I don't know what it is, but it has light reading from its structure. Lure the abductor to it. And when he moves towards you and hits the structure, he will break it open. And it will make it possible for you to loot three more smithing stones. This time it's a smithing stone number six. With all those smithing stones, you'll be able to get your main hand sword spear to plus 16. And your offhand sword spear to plus 15. And you'll have the best possible start on already really hard scaling weapons. But feel free to adjust the level you upgrade your sword spears to what feels the best for you and how much you want to farm. You also definitely want to pick up some good crystal tears for your flask of wonders physic. The first one is a no brainer. Get the dexterity not crystal tier in Lyernia. It raises our dexterity with 10 extra levels for free essentially and do I really need to say more? The second crystal tier is going to be the Fate Nold crystal tier that you can pick up in the Weeping Peninsula right here. It allows us to use certain incantations without needing to spend levels on Fate, which is really nice. And that brings me to the next step. It fits the overall team to electrify our main hand sword spear. Not only does it make the sword spear look amazing, it applies the effect also on your enemies, which looks really cool as well. You can't deny it. But outside of aesthetics, functionally speaking, it also does something obviously. It raises your damage output and it's a nice welcome bonus. The effect will stay on your weapon for 90 seconds and trust me that is more than enough for anything when you just kill things in mere seconds. To get the incantation, we have to go back to Lyernia, go near the artist Shag Grace and kill the knight that patrols there. It should be a really easy fight with your upgraded stuff and this knight will drop a book for you. Turn in the book wherever you want. If you want the easiest route, just do it at the monk at the round table hold. Buy the electrifier ornament incantation and you can also buy other incantations if you want. Because with our fate not crystal tier, we can use a lot of incantations now as well. With this thing applied on our main hand sword spear, everything will just die instantly as you see. And now you actually do it in fashion as well. If you want to increase the damage output that you get with this incantation, make sure to upgrade your shield that you're casting the incantation with because it skills with it. Thankfully we just picked up two smithing stone minor bell bearings so we can get this thing all the way to plus 12 easy peasy right away. Gear. Like I said at the start of the video you start out with a really cool armor set as the warrior and it definitely suffices for now. Mainly thanks to our staggering capabilities with our weapons, good amount of points in vigor and sword dance having a good chunk of hyper armor. Most importantly the set fits the mystic aesthetic and theme of this build and weapons really well actually. You will also probably get the entire guardian set while farming for guardian sword spears as these different armor pieces have a higher drop rate than the actual weapons and that is a really nice bonus because this is a really cool looking set that obviously fits the weapons very well as well so you do have two options in terms of the armor you want to run with this build. for stats you want to just keep investing points mainly in dexterity and vigor while you progress as these are our two most important stats for a pure dexterity build also make sure to spend some points in endurance to get better gear later on and give us a bigger stamina pool and then i would also recommend you to spend just a few points in mind so we can always comfortably use our ashes of wars the numbers on screen are a good guideline and what you should aim for in my opinion Now you'll have an incredibly powerful warrior build that you will just destroy every boss with. You can finish the entire game with this build easily, you'll look badass and dual wielding guardian sword spears with our ashes of wars and all the utility in our kit is just too good. This is truly the definition of a powerful pure dexterity build and if you want you can just speed run the game as you see the fights are really quickly over.
This video will have a follow up though, where the warrior gets a twist and becomes a different character based on things that unlock in the later parts of the game. For now, you have the strongest possible pure dexterity build, also supported by the numbers and you can also make it right at the start of the game. The build also has a lot of variety to it as well, which makes it so much fun. However, also make sure to check out the follow up video, because there are some really cool weapons and combos revolving around the dexterity stat that unlock in later parts of the game that you probably have not seen yet. I want to give a special shout out to my patrons and members, thank you guys for supporting the channel like you do, you are amazing and if you want to join these legends on the list in my future videos make sure to become a member or a patron as well, that helps out the channel a lot. Give the video a like, subscribe and hit the bell thing so you're the first to get notified when I upload something and let me know your thoughts in the comments.